trigger warning you guys these are some harsh truths about limiting your partner and when it's okay and when it's not okay or why jonah hill might be right i'm adam lane smith and i make relationships better Today we're covering a recent scandal that hit the internet like a truck and it's making people furious. I'm going to show you what that means for your future relationships and how to avoid getting hurt or controlled. Buckle up for this video and prepare to be angry. Now some context for this video. Jonah Hill's ex recently leaked some DMs which he claims are abusive and misogynistic. But are they? These are, I believe, text messages or DMs straight from Jonah to her. She shows him commenting a few things at her. I'm going to read one of the biggest ones right now, though, that's making the rounds on the internet. In particular, this conversation shows Jonah laying out what he says he's not okay with in a relationship. Now, I'm going to quote him here. He says, If you need surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men, to model, to post pictures of yourself in a bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful. I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it and there will be no hard feelings. These are my boundaries for a romantic partnership. My boundaries with you based on the way these actions have hurt our trust. Now that sounds like quite a statement and some of you might be saying, why is this a big deal? This is normal stuff. Others might already be fuming. We'll find out. Some women in particular have taken these statements as demands and an attempt to control a woman. Plenty of simpy males on the internet, oh, by the way, have asked why he would make these demands of a professional surfer, posting pictures in a bathing suit makes a little more sense, or why he waited until they were so deep into the relationship to start changing the rules. I have some ideas on that. Some men on the internet are saying that he has every right to set boundaries and that this statement reflects exactly how their trust has been hurt and how that speaks volumes about the changing situation on the ground that we don't know. We don't know the back history. Again, this was apparently leaked by his ex and used as leverage to say he's being abusive and misogynistic. That doesn't look good. In this case, a lot of guys are saying it sounds like she has probably been perhaps unfaithful to him specifically. It kind of sounds like it. And he's laying out what he needs for them to continue in good faith. So let's start with some basics here. Is it okay for you to hold a boundary? Some people say yes. Some people say no. Some people say this isn't a boundary. So let's see if we can agree or disagree. Is it okay in your eyes, you watching this right now, to hold a boundary that your partner cannot cheat on you secretly behind your back when you've agreed to be exclusive without using any protection with someone they know has an incurable STD like HIV. Is it okay to have a boundary against all of that? If you've said yes, that's a boundary. That's a limit on your partner. You have said it is okay to limit your partner in some way in the relationship or at least to set an expectation that they limit themselves. Very few people are gonna be watching this saying, no, it's fine for them to break an agreement that we made that puts my health at risk without my consent. So we can at least agree that some boundaries on behaviors are okay. In fact, they're good. It keeps you safe. Sometimes a partner has a responsibility to act a certain way for you if they wanna be in a relationship with you. Great. So now we have to decide where that line is that separates control from healthy boundaries. I will say this, there is no clear line, at least not based on topics. What's going to be one okay for one couple is not going to be okay for another couple. Some couples really enjoy spanking or really aggressive play, all kinds of things. It would be violent abuse if both parties weren't enthusiastically consenting to it. Other couples are going to have rigid boundaries around interactions with the opposite sex, and those boundaries will help make both of them feel safer and more trusting with each other. The issue here isn't what people do necessarily, it's discussing and agreeing as a couple on what limits you're gonna set, and especially not having any double standards. Double standards are death in relationships. Now, every single couple has to have these discussions and come to agreements together. They must have these talks to see if their boundaries are compatible. That's, that's basic compatibility testing. It should be at the beginning of a relationship. Now, in the case of Jonah Hill, it sounds like they may have waited too long to address what is and is not acceptable to each one of them. They appear to maybe have started that talk once feelings were already tense and hostile. I go back to his last statement of these are my boundaries with you because actions have hurt our trust. 
That's a very telling statement. Now, of course, if you wait this long, it's going to feel controlling if somebody who's hostile to you starts laying out a boundary. It will feel like an attack. However, Jonah Hill, in this case, is not wrong for feeling that he needs those boundaries that he's clarified. And his ex also isn't wrong for saying that she doesn't want to abide by those rules, if that's what she said. We don't know. She didn't release that part as far as I saw. But each one of them has the right to do what they want and set boundaries. Now, here's the really brutal kicker statement. People who are attacking Jonah Hill for being abusive and misogynistic for laying out those boundaries are really saying that women are entitled to men's love without any conditions, and that men are never allowed to express needs or expectations that limit women in any way. No, men have every right to lay expectations out for a continued relationship, just like Jonah did. Jonah did not say, do these things or I will beat you. He said these were his conditions for a continued romantic partnership, and he wished her well if she disagreed and wanted to part ways. He gave her a choice. Anybody railing at Jonah Hill for this is really saying that men should shut up and provide unconditional love forever without any conditions or boundaries. That's called emotional slavery, by the way. No one should be compelled to provide unconditional love forever without conditions. No one should be told to shut up about their needs or their desires or their boundaries. Adults can make agreements or choose to dissolve them. And Jonah's approach was to be clear and on the table with his expectations. So let's flip the scenario around for a minute. Let's say a woman texts her boyfriend and lays out boundaries that she says she cannot live with anymore. Then she tells him he's free to choose to live that life and she won't have any hard feelings for him at all. He leaks those DMs online and claims that she's abusing and controlling him. What are your thoughts on that? Is it okay if a woman does it, but not a man? Finally, yes. People do say that Jonah should have applied these boundaries and addressed them earlier in the relationship. I agree with you. These are things that should be discussed much earlier, especially in modern relationships. But maybe he did address them and she ignored them. And this was his final attempt. Maybe there were a number of broken things in the relationship and this was his, his statement of what he needed to even continue. We don't know. Maybe she cheated on him numerous times while surfing. I have no idea. Something went wrong here and this is his statement on what it would take to continue the relationship. She said, you're controlling me. I wonder about that, especially since she was the one who said that she supposedly leaked these DMs online as revenge to smear him. But we have to assume that she is acting 100% in good faith and that he is the bad person for trying to build boundaries. That's pretty weird. I look especially at that line about how these issues have hurt their trust. That tells me that something happened, something that spawned this conversation. Guys, I've been studying psychology and doing all of this and helping people for 15 years. People don't just say, this broke our trust and we need to have a conversation and these are my boundaries. When nothing has happened. That is really not how that game goes. When somebody is hurt, they reassess the boundaries and say, for me to go forward, this is what I will need from you. Can you agree to this or can you not? It is okay if you don't, but this is what I will need if this is going to happen. Please just tell me what you want. That is the right way to handle affairs and breaches of trust. So what he did, at the very least, reflects what psychology teaching would say to do in broken trust. This is what we teach people to do. It's just that he's a man and she leaked it first and spun the story. And then a bunch of women picked it up and said, oh no, look at this awful man. Men have controlled me, therefore she's experiencing the same thing. That's usually what happens in cases like this. Jonah in this case sounds hurt, but it also sounds like he's clear and he's not threatening. He's not coercing. He's giving her a choice as one grown adult to another. So I'll ask you right now, is it misogynistic to treat women like adults who are capable of making decisions and giving consent? Is it misogynistic to present them with options devoid of threats and allow them to decide what feels right for their life? At some point, people need to take responsibility for their choices. If your choice is to enjoy unlimited freedom forever without any responsibility, okay. But then if you demand that others provide unconditional love for you at the point of having their names smeared if they don't, that's coercion. And again, emotional slavery. I want everything and to give nothing. I mean, that's, that is a pretty abusive relationship, but not the one that they described initially, is it? It is okay 
to tell your partners that conditions have changed and you need certain boundaries or you cannot continue. This is totally okay. It is okay to decide that you don't want to abide by those boundaries and you can dissolve the relationship. That is totally your right as well. It is never okay to advocate for emotional slavery and silencing somebody so they just have to suck it up and live with it. That is never okay, male or female. Now, in this case, it doesn't look like Jonah was the one who lashed out and got revenge for boundaries being crossed. He's not the one in this case, it sounds like, who leaked those DMs and then claimed abuse to try to get everybody on his side. So to Jonah Hill, in this case, and all the other Jonas out there, male and female, who feel that they have to remain silent about their needs for fear of what someone might do to them if they speak up with boundaries. You are not wrong for having needs or for wanting boundaries. You do not have to be silent or be a slave. It is okay to stand your ground on what you need and what you cannot accept. The lesson here is to apply your boundaries early and discuss them with your partner. Have an ongoing assessment of needs and an open channel of dialogue about how things are going. Now, obviously, this is an ongoing situation. I am not saying Jonah Hill is a saint. I don't know the guy. There could be other stuff we learn. But right now, this is a great conversation for us to begin having about when it's okay to share your boundaries. Yes, it is okay to have boundaries and needs. It is okay sometimes to limit what you will allow in the relationship, as long as the other person is free to make the decision not to join you in that relationship. That's what seems to be happening here, which is why I'm using this as a teaching moment. This is great. The way he appears to handle it in that DM, great. A couple other DMs that were released, he's being sarcastic, okay. But in this case, this is what a therapist would teach you to do. This is what an attachment specialist would teach you to do. Now, remember this, please. Do not date someone who will happily smear you by leaking your private disagreements if you try to apply boundaries with them. <laughs> Make sure that the trust is there, you have your conversations as early as possible, and have them with somebody who is going to at least work in good faith with you, instead of holding a gun to your head and saying, if you do that, I'm gonna leak your DMs, and then spin the world against you to try to punish you. So, at this point, if you need help dodging controllers or applying boundaries in your life, check out my private coaching community, The Attachment Circle, with twice weekly group coaching sessions. We can show you how to make your relationships better. What are your thoughts on this case and on controlling versus boundaries? Please let me know in the comments. I wanna hear from men and women so we can have conversations like adults and get to a place where we can take care of each other. I'm Adam Lane Smith, The Attachment Specialist, and I'll see you in the next video.